Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you because you are manifesting your power. We have heard testimonies of the goodness of the Lord and the mercy of the Lord. We thank you because no matter the problem, our God is greater. No matter the river that may be before us, God has a bridge that will go over that river. And we thank you, Lord, because you are still manifesting your power. And you are going to manifest that power tonight again. And Lord, we are praying that as we prepare ourselves to receive of that mighty power in our spirits, our souls, and our bodies, we are asking that every area of our lives will be prepared in Jesus' name. Amen. Deliver the oppressed. Amen. Save sinners. Amen. Heal the sick. Amen. Do mighty things within us Amen. so that you can go back home today rejoicing Amen. because of the manifestation of the power of God. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The epistle of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 11. I want you to be very attentive today because everything we say will be very important to you. Not only for today, but in the days ahead of us. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In the three verses I've read, the word faith has come out more than once. The description or definition of faith is given. What faith does for God or in God for man is also shown in verse 6. And it shows how you can really live. Some people are walking about merely existing. But they don't actually live in joy. They cannot live in the power of God. They cannot live in the satisfaction that life is well worth living. But why? Because they are not living by faith. The only way you can live on the planet earth is to live by faith. The only way you can enjoy life is to have faith. In Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. That means the only time you can actually live is the time you are living by faith. But if you are living by the news you hear from your friends, from your neighbors, you will be living in fear. When you are living in fear, many problems will come upon you in your heart and in your body. When you are living by rumors being carried about in the office or in the home, you will be living an underprivileged life. You will not be happy. You can't be happy living to rumors going on all over in the city or in the nation. But the only way you can live is to live by faith. And there are many people, they are Christians, they are supposed to be Christians, 
They have even been coming here and the Lord is telling us tonight, they do not live by faith. They live by fear. They live by the news they are hearing. And they live by the rumors that um, pass through their ears. And uh, such people will be miserable. In the night, bad dreams will come. Fear, will, fear and panic will seize your heart. And then you will not be able to go out as you ought to go in the day. You will be a king living like a servant. We are kings and we are priests unto the Lord. And when you are a king, you ought to rule, you ought to reign. And you are, you are not supposed to be bowed down your head and saying, Well, I don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. If you are in the kingdom of God and you are a king in that kingdom of God, the power in the kingdom will be manifested through you. You'll be overcoming the devil. You'll be overcoming sickness. And you will not be living by what the people are saying all around. And I submit to you tonight, how could Abraham have ever lived except by faith? Because God said, Abraham, he said, here am I. Pack your load. Yes, I will. And leave home. Yes, I will. I will obey. But oh God, where are we going? And there was silence. No answer. But he had packed his load. He had made ready to leave home and to go. But then what did he do? He went out, not knowing where he was going. But he knew that God was at the end of the road. That he will take the move. If he will go, the Lord will be going with him and the Lord will show him the place of his rest. You can only do that by faith. God called Noah and said, Noah, rain is coming and rain had never fallen. And Noah said, oh God, what is that? He said, flood will also come. Oh God, what is a flood? And God said, flood is when the rain is so much that it covers the whole earth and everybody is drowned, dead. Therefore build an ark. How could he do that without faith? After Abraham came out, and all people were calling Abraham old man. And they were all saying, Papa. And when, you, when they call you Papa, you know what that means. They are saying that, well, you have no, lo uh, no more years to go. They are saying that you write your will, distribute your property. And they are saying that if um, you, know, you have books and you have uh, clothes, distribute everything. When they say Papa, it means, uh, well, you are on your way home. And everybody that, that saw Sarah also said, Mama, and uh, well, that is uh, of course saying, well, uh, you are on your way home. And then God said, Abraham, your name is now Abraham, the father of many nations. Look up and count the stars. So will your children be. And if you can count the sun on the side, on the shore of the sea, so your children will be counted. But he was already old. How could he receive that except by faith? By what? Faith. By faith. You can only live. You can only enjoy life by faith. If Abraham lives into rumors, he'll never be able to live. In fact, he would have bought the type of coffin that they should use in burying him before he died. And then he got Isaac. All along, he was to live by faith. And uh, God said, Abraham, here am I. I've got something for you to do. Oh yes, I'm willing. What is it, Lord? Take Isaac, your son. And go to the mountain that I will show you. Sacrifice him to me. A burnt offering. Kill him. Burn him up. And immediately, Abraham heard about death. Listen. Immediately, Abraham heard about death. He began to think about resurrection. And therefore, he looked at that child and he saw that child dead but resurrected. Saw the child on the other side of the grave. Saw the child lying down but immediately rising up. That is living by faith. And then called two, uh, two um, servants and said, Come, follow us. We're going to worship the Lord. If he feared about, well, what is going to happen? If he did not think about resurrection after death, 
he will not be able to live joyfully. But he was thinking of the resurrection. And while he was talking to the two um, servants, he said, and they lie. So if Abraham did not live by faith, that would have been impossible. And God called Moses and said, Moses, you'll go to Pharaoh and you'll tell him, let my people go. And then they'll come to the wilderness. And I will lead them out of Egypt into the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. He was a reasonable man, that Moses, educated man. You know, sometimes the more educated you are, the more fearful you are. Because you'll, you'll hear international news, you'll hear about uh, what is happening on the international market, you'll, you'll know more about uh, what they call austerity. But I want to, you to understand, austerity is not for the children of God. Yes. Where the church is a nation living inside another nation. A holy nation. The kingdom has been given unto us. We are members of the body of Christ. And that body, when it was on earth, before the cross, never knew any lack. And the body of Christ after the cross does not know any lack. And so when God called Moses and they said, you lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yes, eventually he believed. And then they came out. The night they came out and they were to walk in the wilderness. Now there were not grocery stores on the road. No supermarket on the road. How will they eat? They will eat by faith. There was no shopping center on the road. How will they be closed? They will be closed by faith. And there was no pipe water on the way. In fact, it was a wilderness and some of the places had no water. How will they get water to drink? They will drink water by faith. Because if they were believing God, water will come out of the rock. And you say, well, the factories are closing down. Oh yes, they are closing down. It may be a wilderness to the people of the world, but you'll keep on living by faith. You know, some people will stop coming to the fellowship because there's no money in their pocket. When there is nothing in your pocket, all you will spend will come from heaven. Because there is sufficient for you in heaven. And they were going. The first year they went, there was no lack. And Moses didn't know how many years they'll keep in the wilderness. And um, they didn't apply to America to come and establish a supermarket in the wilderness. They did not apply to uh, Europe or apply anywhere. They did not apply for, you know, government loan from the government of Egypt. And say, well, Pharaoh, we're having a hard time in the wilderness. Austerity has come upon us in the wilderness. Help. No. Manna fell every day. Water came out of the rock. The clothes they had on them will not, uh, will not tear. It went on and on. How did they live? They lived by faith. They were having children in the wilderness. But the midwives of Egypt did not follow them. How did they deliver their children? By faith. All that happened to them happened by faith. Then the children of Israel, after they settled down, they committed sin. They did evil in the presence of the Lord. And there was a famine. And God told Elijah to announce, as the Lord liveth, there shall be no rain, nor dew, this year, according to my word. But you must ask Elijah, Elijah, when there is famine, it's for everybody in the country. When there is no rain, when there is drought, it's for everybody. How will you live if there is no rain? When I stop living by rain, I start living by faith. If there is no food in the market, if there is no food in the farm, if all the farms are burnt, how will you live? When I do not live by the crops in the farm, I live by the produce of the faith. And so he went to the riverside. How? Because he knew that faith will supply all that needs to be supplied. Faith will be a shelter. Faith will be the shade in the sunshine. 
faith will provide the food when there is no food. And faith will give him water to drink when there is no water. Eventually, everything dried up there. An impossibility came. And um, the famine was still on. What did he do at that time? When he saw the water drying up, if he became afraid, he would stop living. And death was setting. The moment you look away from God and you start looking at circumstances, hearing rumors, hearing the news that people are telling and they're making themselves more and more afraid, the moment you are listening to that in your market and all the market women are discussing and they're saying, oh, the world is bad. Oh, yes, the world is bad, but the church is good. And I say, well, we don't know what is happening uh, to all the systems of the world, but we know what is happening in the kingdom of God. And they say, well, it appears everything is dry, but everything is fresh in the kingdom of God, and I am in that kingdom. When you know that you are in the kingdom of God, it doesn't worry you, it doesn't bother you what is happening anywhere on the face of the earth. And so he waited for God. And God called Elijah and said, I have provided food for you. Thank you, God. Where, it, where is it? It's in the house of a widow woman. But you go there and tell the woman that you'll be living there for the rest of the famine and I will feed you and feed the woman and feed the child. Thank you, God. Then he went there. While he got there, there are many times it's better to close your eyes while you are walking. Because you might see so much that will make you afraid and say, Did God really mean it? Is God serious? He got there and the woman she saw, she wasn't properly dressed. Because she had no money to buy soap to wash her clothes. And uh, if, he, if he was to walk by sight, he will say, uh -uh, Is this the woman that God sent me to, to feed me? Who cannot feed herself. And then told the woman, Woman, can I have a cup of water? Oh yes. And then while she was going, Elijah said, I'm please, uh, I'm hungry. So therefore bring me a meal. And the woman looked back and said, Man of God, Man of God, Man of God, open your eyes. Come and look at the kitchen. Come and walk by sight a little. Never do it. Never walk by sight. Keep on living by faith. For the just shall live by faith. And then the woman described her condition. That's news. But don't go by the news. Go by the word of God. If God has told you you will live. And the news tells you the, the news tells you that you will not live. Listen to the word. Switch off from the news. If the doctors say you are going to die, but the word of God says you will live, listen to the word of God. Living, you will live. And uh, Elijah said, No, we are not to walk by sight. Go and make for me. That barrel will never fail. And immediately, you see, when somebody has faith, and he himself is walking by faith and living by faith. When he gives you one sentence, faith will spark up in you. And the woman immediately believed. And that is how they went through the famine. How do we live during the famine? By faith. If there is war, how do we live? By faith. If there is pestilence or plague or sickness in the community, how do we live? By faith. You don't catch what the people have. You catch what heaven has. When you are living in a sick world, you don't cut the sickness of the world, you cut the health from heaven. When you are living in a, in a world with austerity, you don't cut the austerity of the world, you cut the wealth that is coming from heaven. When there is a perplexity all over the world, you don't catch that. You are moving all around that, but you catch what is coming from heaven. The just shall live by faith. And I believe it. if it was possible for Noah, for Abraham, if it was possible for Sarah, if it was possible for Noah, if it was possible for uh, Moses and uh, Elijah and all these people we have mentioned, it is possible for you today. 
and uh, many people are living by the news they hear that's what the Lord has been communicating with me since morning that the people are not enjoying me the people are not looking up to me the people are hearing too much of what is going on in the world and therefore fear is coming upon their hearts if you allow the fear to come it will kill you it will destroy you it will destroy your family and it can destroy this whole family if we begin to talk to one another and begin to tell them the rumors we're hearing, fear will come and the power of God will go down. But if you look away from all these things, well, the people of the world, they have nothing else to talk about. What will they talk about? That's the only thing they know. They don't read the Bible. They don't hear us say the Lord. They don't hear the word of the Lord. But we are to live by the word of the Lord. And uh, it doesn't matter what is happening around you. 1,000 will die or can fall at your side. And 10,000 at your right hand side. If you are living by faith. Only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked. As for us, we are privileged people. Precious people in the sight of the Lord. And if there is no food in the kitchen, remember there is food in the house of God. If your bank account is running out, the promises of God are not running out. Jesus was to pay tax. And in the pocket there was nothing. But he had money in the bank. You say, Jesus had money in the bank. Oh yes, the river bank. And uh, when Peter came in, and uh, Jesus talked to Peter and said, Who are the people who are supposed to pay tax? And he discussed a little. Okay, so we don't offend them. Well, we'll need to pay tax. And Peter was about to say, But uh, where is the money? The bank, um, the, the pocket uh, book is uh, running out. He said, Now, um, you take um, all the instruments you ought to take to the bank and go to the bank. And uh, the first fish that comes out of the river bank, catch it, and um, it will give you from the cashier the money that we need. Amen. And uh, Peter went to the bank, and they uh, got there. You need to line up. You know, when it's uh, coming directly from heaven by faith, the road is very clear. Amen. Because there is no accident and there is no hindrance, there is no blockage. On the way of faith, when it is faith, the road is straight. It's an expressway. It will come. And, uh, you know, got it, uh, got the fish out and opened the mouth and said, uh, and, you know, the fish did not um, struggle, just opened the mouth and then um, took the money and threw the fish uh, back and then took the money and paid the, the tax. Now, when you are living by faith, you are not anxious, you are not worried, Marriage um, may be coming about a few weeks, but worry, where will I get this? It's coming from heaven. Where will I get that? It's coming from heaven. Keep your faith channels clear and everything is okay. But if the faith channel becomes blocked, there will be trouble because fear will come. Worry and anxiety will come. Let's come back to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 two and six now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by age the elders obtained a good report without faith it is impossible to please him without faith it is impossible to please him. And uh, you know many times we have allowed our worship to depend upon the people of the world. You don't realize how much your service. If you are a carnal Christian. If you are a Christian that does not know the word of God. You don't know how much you are serving the Lord depends upon the sinners. You'll find that in churches where they don't have the word of God. The church will be full at the time when they are paid their salary. 
The church will be full when uh, the bus uh, drivers are working. But let the bus drivers go on strike. And uh, there is nobody to take them. They can't come on their feet because they are looking out to the bus drivers of the world to take them to go and serve God. But the people of God will say, oh, they've stopped their work, okay. They remember that for 40 years the people of God were walking. They had, they had no car, no bicycle, no motorcycle, no aeroplane. And they walked and walked and walked and their legs were not swollen. When you are serving God and worshipping God by faith, it doesn't matter whether there is no taxi in the way. That is by faith. And uh, on Saturday night, no petrol in your car. And then your wife says, uh, we are not going to church tomorrow. So you mean that if the petrol station is not at work, we cannot serve God. Of course we are going tomorrow. We're still going to the fellowship center. How shall we go? We'll go God's way. Which is God's way? You'll see tomorrow morning. That's living by faith. When you live by faith, with you all things are possible. And uh, you open the door in the morning. There's no food in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, some people will say, I don't think we'll be able to go and worship God this Sunday because, you see, there is no food. But God says, there is meat in my house. But to say there is no kitchen at the fellowship center, well, come and see. You leave your house and take the step of faith and come out and just look up to God. Come with an empty stomach. I believe that by the time you are going back, you will go with a full stomach. Yes. You say, how will that be possible? I don't know, but I know he will do it. He that brought water out of the rock, he that made a way out of the Red Sea, he that got money in a fish, he that told that the fish to drop Jonah on the missionary field where he ought to preach and declare the gospel. At the gate of Nineveh, I believe that God knows how to feed the hungry even today. And we're to live by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please Him. He that cometh to God must believe that He is. Must believe that He is. Must believe that He is. You know, people are eagerly waiting for this coming Saturday. And um, what's in their mind is they're feeling that this is what will work. This is what will work. They're not thinking about God. And you'll find that in some churches this coming Sunday, the people will not uh, attend worship. Because all night they'll be wide awake wanting to listen to what is going on. And by when morning comes, one, they are tired. Many of them may be disappointed because they are not in the executive committee of God. And God will not tell them, that is what I want. But for those who are living by faith, every time is shouting time. People ask us, why do you shout so much? At the fellowship center, we started shouting when we stopped doubting. The doubters are not shouting. And the shouters are not doubting. Did you understand that sentence? Yes. I hope you will. But you see, when you cannot make every morning a shouting time, and sing hallelujah to the Lord, knowing that it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Even if it is Nebuchadnezzar there, God will affect and influence and control Nebuchadnezzar. It doesn't matter at all. With God, He is in control. He is the one that rules in the affairs of men. Did I lose, did I lose anybody in the crowd? Did I lose you? Okay. Keep on hearing me by faith. You see, you can't even hear a spiritual sermon without faith. You can't listen to something that is coming from heaven except you do it by faith. 
He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Now, when you are rewarded, nothing is taken away from you. When you come to God, he is not going to take anything away from you. He is going to add something to you. Every time you come and you say, oh Lord, I believe that God is, then move a step forward, you will be rewarded. It may be reward in your bank account. It may be reward in your home. It may be reward on your wife. It may be reward on your body. You'll be rewarded one way because there'll be a fulfillment of the promise of God every time you come to the Lord. But diligently seek Him. Diligently seek Him. I want to point four things to you you must never forget. Four things you must never forget. Four things. The blood, the word, the name, the spirit. The blood. If that blood of Jesus is upon you, you can go anywhere. You can walk anywhere. The devil isn't going to bother you when he sees the mark of the blood of Jesus upon you. Evil spirits are not going to come there when they see the mark of the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. Sicknesses and diseases cannot take any root upon your body when they can realize and recognize the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. Number two, the word of the Lord. When you have the word of the Lord, you can live. Anytime there was a battle, there was a war, I mean the children of Israel... If the prophet will stand up and say, Thus says the Lord, everybody will become relaxed. If they had been afraid, if they had been saying that destruction has come, terrible things had come. Now, any time there was fear and panicking, any time there was trouble in Israel, and somebody rose up and said, Thus says the Lord, by the word of the Lord, they relaxed. Because they knew that what God has said, if you receive it in your faith, it will manifest it in your experience. I'll say that again. When God says something and you receive that word in your faith, that word will be manifested and fulfilled in your experience. Receive it in your faith first. Hold it in your faith. Grab it in your faith and keep on standing on it. And it will be manifested or brought or fulfilled in your experience. And then the name. The name of Jesus. The blood first. The word. And then the name. When that name is on your lips. By the name of the Lord Jesus, you will overcome every, every difficulty. Every mountain will be removed before you. By the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Angels adore that name. Devils tremble before that name. Sicknesses depart at the mention of that name. In fact, every knee shall bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. And then the spirit. The spirit that will raise the dead. That will quicken the dead. That will heal and give life to your mortal body. Never forget the blood, the word, the name, the spirit. Let's close with just four references, one on each of those things I've mentioned. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token, that's for a sign, upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The people that don't have the blood of Jesus upon them, upon their wives, upon their husbands, upon their children. Those people are really living in fear. But... When you walk in the street, if the blood is upon you, no fear. As you are going back to your houses, if the blood is upon you, there is no fear. Anywhere, anytime, under any circumstance, when I see the blood, I will pass 
over you. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. You must expect to be fed by that you do not know. When you are coming, every Thursday like this, you don't know the testimonies you are going to hear, and those testimonies actually feed your face. You don't know the word of God you are going to hear, but that word feeds your face. On Sunday when you are coming, you do not know exactly what you are going to get, but you know whatever it is you are going to have, it will feed your face, and it will feed you. And it fill you with manner that you knew not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live, listen, man does not live by bread only, but by every word. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. In the morning when you carry your Bible, read your Bible, hear a word from the Lord. Hear a word proceeding out of the mouth of the Lord. And when you hear that word proceeding out of the mouth of the Lord, that morning, whatever is happening during the day, live by that word. Live by that word. Live by that word. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it. Is he destroyed? And he is saved. The blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The word Man shall lay by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the name, the righteous runneth into the name of the Lord, and he is saved. The Spirit. Romans chapter, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The spirit of life is in Christ. If you are in Christ, that spirit is in you. And it will make you live. It will make you free. How free? As free as a son that sets free. You'll be free from every bondage. You'll be free from every sickness. You'll be free from the fear and the panic of death. Now, you must remember, please, that you are not like the people of the world. Their God is not like our God. Their gods are idols. Our God is the creator of the heaven and the earth. Their gods have no eyes. They have eyes they don't see. Ears they have but they can't hear. Legs they have but they cannot move. But our God can hear. Our God can see. Our God can move. Our God is love. And he has compassion upon us. And if you will live by faith, the word of the Lord coming unto us tonight, there will be no sorrow in your heart anymore. And the Lord will fulfill all the desires that we have from, uh, from Him. Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you received it and you will have it. Remember the blood. Remember the word. Remember the name. Remember the spirit. Let us pray. Talk about what you have got. Not about what you have not got. If you've got salvation, talk about it. If you've got faith, talk about it. If you have got the life of God, talk about it. If you have got the blood of Jesus upon you, talk about it. If you have got the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, talk about it. If you have got the name, the name, the name of Jesus, talk about it. 
if you have got the spirit of God, talk about him. Live by faith. Live under the blood of Jesus. Live by the word of God. Live in the security of the name of Jesus. And live by the power of the spirit of God. Live by faith. Live by faith. Live by faith. Now, if you've been terribly afraid because of the rumors you're hearing, and the more you discuss with people, the more fear comes upon your heart, and you have tried to shake yourself from it, and you even try to read the Word of God to bring out a particular promise, but all that you read in the Word of God became like newspaper to you. No more effect. And you want to be delivered right now, just raise up your hand where you are. The fear made the word of God of none effect in you. And when you read the word of God and you try to encourage yourself, it became just like newspaper to you. It, it had no effect at all. Just raise up your hand where you are. Do you believe that you can be free tonight? Yeah. Our Father, we worship you. We praise your name. We know that we're living by faith and not by fear. We're living by the word of God, not by the news that is coming from the world. We're a holy nation. We're a royal priesthood. We're the kingdom of God. We're the, we're the children of the living God. And we do not lay by what goes on on the earth. We lay by the abundance from heaven. We we'll not live by what people say. We we'll live by the word of God. We we'll do not live by the resources on earth. We we'll live by the resources from heaven. And when the rivers of the world run dry, the rivers of God in heaven will be flowing unto us. And when all that we see in the world is not bringing encouragement, our encouragement and comfort will be coming from heaven. When the natural fathers are disappointed, the spiritual father will come to our rescue. And when there is nothing to rely upon in this world, then the whole forces of heaven, all the hosts of heaven, all the power of God in heaven will come to our support. When there is nothing to stand upon here, then God will be the bridge and a platform. Others that will be able to stand and will be able to shout the glory and the praises of the Lord. Now you spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus, get out! And I pray and I believe that the people of God from this very moment will be totally free in Jesus' name! This world is not our home. We are not depending upon the world to live, to be sustained, or to rejoice. We are rejoicing because of the news from heaven. That the world is under the control of our Heavenly Father. And it doesn't matter which human being is seen in the newspaper. It doesn't matter whose name we hear over the radio. The name that is above every name. He is never changed. Since God has put Jesus on the throne. He has always been there. As long as he is there, we shall live. As long as Jesus is there, possibilities will become possible. As long as he's there, he's a healer of the sickness of the, of the sick. 
is the savior of the sinners and is the provider for all those who are in need and right now we command that all fear will go away from the heart of all these who are raising up their hands in Jesus name We do not depend upon the provision of the world. We, de we depend upon the provision from heaven. When the earth has failed, heaven will not fail. When the rivers of the world are dry, there is one flowing from the throne of God. And therefore, Father, we pray that those of us who have been depending upon the world, who have been looking at the world instead of looking at Jesus, who are sinking in the rivers of circumstances of life, we pray that right now, they'll take their eyes away from the world and they'll begin to look at Jesus on the cross and Jesus on the throne. In Jesus' name! Amen. By the word of the Lord, by the revelation of the Lord, I declare to all of you who are raising up your hands, be free now in Jesus' name! Amen! Amen! Amen. 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 If you are sick, place your hand on the place that is paining you. And if one eye particularly has pain, one eye of yours has real serious pain, the eyeball, just lay your hand on it and look up to God and the Lord will heal you right now. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. You are a wonderful God. And we're asking that right now, where there is pain, where there is disease or sickness, we pray that you take everything away now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now this is the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the kingdom of God, and therefore sickness has no place. And here I stand with the authority of the word of God. Here I stand in the security of the name of Jesus. Here I stand with the mark of the blood of Jesus Christ. By the power of the spirit of God. I challenge you. I come against you. And I rebuke you. You sickness. Get away in Jesus name. And with all the children of God who are laying their hands upon the places paining them. I ask that they'll be free from this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our Father, we thank you. Because we know you have answered our prayer this day. We know that with us, heaven is our home. And we know that our security is coming from heaven. We are not bothered by what people say. We are not bothered by what we see. We are bothered and we are challenged by what we read in your word. We have the blood. And when I see the blood you said, you will pass over us. We have the word and we shall live, not die by the word. We have the name and the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And we have the spirit and the Lord, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us totally free from the law of sin and death. And so, Father, knowing what we have tonight, the blood, the word, the name, and the spirit, we know that we shall lay. Lay your hand upon everyone. Amen. Let your power continue to move in everyone. Amen. In our houses and streets all this weekend, work mightily and miraculously through us in Jesus' name. Amen. And when we come to worship here on Sunday, we'll be coming with the joy of the Lord, Amen. with the life of Christ, Amen. with the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do wonders through us Amen. as we lay our hands on the sick, may they recover. Amen. As we stand before demon possessed people, may they be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray that over this weekend, You'll help us to be watchful, Amen. to be prayerful. Amen. You'll help us to keep our ears tuned to heaven Amen. and to the word of God. Amen. And Father, we'll know that even though we're living here, we're not of this world. Amen. And our life is coming from God, not from men. 
be with us, O Lord. Amen. Magnify yourself more and more. Amen. Exalt the name of Jesus through our lives. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.